Well, good evening and welcome again to another session of Talks and Chats. It's been a little bit. I'm glad that we we're back. Um, this is a beautiful time. I believe God is really speaking um, during this season that we're in as we move toward the finishing up of the summer and going into the fall. So much is going on. We know so much is going on and we continue to pray and lift up families and and praying for those who had lost loved ones and some of these recent shootings. It's just been ridiculous, but God is still on the throne and we believe and we trust in him. That's what he says. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he's going to direct our path. So we believe that and we trust that. Hey, tonight's going to be a great night. It's going to be unique, I believe, as uh, you're looking at this young lady to my right. It is a blessing to have my daughter. Uh, my third daughter, or whatever, fourth, fifth, whatever, third, <laughs> second, third, second. There we go. <laughs> second. There we go. <laughs> uh, Wandra Hudson, and um, she's going to be sharing with us tonight. And um, she's also a part of the teen ministry, so she's going to share a little bit uh, as we get to that point. But I want her to share a little bit uh, about herself and what she's doing right now. What What do you do as a job? What's going on? Well, currently I work at Procter & Gamble. I am in research and development um, for the fabric care business. I am a products researcher, so call me like a liaison between consumers and available technologies. How do you meet and mesh the two for consumer delight? So, yes. Consumer delight, love yes. that. That's a beautiful thing. Oh, by the way, she's also um, calls me to be a grandfather four times over. So, got four sons, right? Yes, that is part of what I do. Definitely have to say that because <laughs> I do my mother every day. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, so, there was a unique moment we had. You know, Pastor's been preaching um, on this, this piece that he dealt with parents. Um, and if we had the opportunity to cho choose a parent, you know, for to parent our children, you know, what qualities, what will we look for in, in doing that? And that, that really struck me. And he even thought, you know, there are people that will probably say, I want this, I want that, even beyond what they are willing to do themselves, you know. And I saw a piece that had the Jungle Book, which was very interesting. And uh, we were at the altar one Sunday and, uh, I happened to be in his view and I knew Mowgli <laughs> and I think I said Mowgli and he said did you know anything about this and I said uh, no I don't but then I thought you do <laughs> and um, and there's some interesting elements that went along with that that movie you know that what what Disney put together and um, I thought hey you know let's share a little bit of that because that may wrap into what's going on with some of our youth, and especially since we're getting ready to jump off into our, the teen ministry, the youth ministry is all getting going again here at Zion. So I thought, hey, why not? Uh, I'll, I'll ask, you know, conceptually, what's, what's this whole Jungle Book about? So go, going back, if I have to leave my kids, in the hands of somebody else, that it has to align with my values and my morals. And so I have to pick somebody that I trust that would follow the similar way that I would be taking care of my children. Yes. So in the Jungle Book, Mowgli, our main character, is found in the jungle by the Black Panther Bagheera. He entrusts this infant to a wolf pack. So they, they raise him, they teach him to, to their ways and how to survive in the jungle. And in the movie, there is this drought that happens. During the time of drought, it's like a peace time. So when all the animals go to the watering hole, basically, um, 
the smaller animals know that the larger animals are not going to attack. It's like, okay, we good. So during this scene. Like a peaceful time. It's peace. Yeah, yeah. they say, they call it the peace rock. Peace rock. That okay. they can see because the water level is so low that mm -hmm. this rock is, is now visible. So they call it peace rock. And during this time at Peace Rock, Shere Khan, the tiger, is like, he's coming to the watering hole and he's like, there's a, a smell in the air. So what is this smell? I, I know what it is, but I'm kind of waiting on y'all to tell me, like, who let a man in the jungle? Mm. Because that's against our laws. We have laws here and there shouldn't be a man in the jungle, right? So their explanation is like, he's a child, we found him, we're taking care of him, you know, and it's peace rock. This is a water truce, so you can't touch him anyway. He's like, all right, all right, you're right. So while this drought is going on, no, I'm not gonna touch him. But when the water rises, he's all mine. So now they have to make a decision. And it's like, okay, this child that we took in, can he stay? Can he go? What's best? So Bagheera, the panther that entrusted him to this, this pack, decides what's going to be best is that we take you back to this man village because that's who can protect you best at this point because you got a tiger that's on you. Mm. <laughs> He's coming, coming and he you. means business. Gotcha. You, your people, your kind scarred him before. So before you get the chance to become a threat to me, his plan is to eliminate them, right? So on this journey to go back to the village, um, Mowgli is like, well, it's more so like a, a, a journey of finding myself. Cause it's like, well, why do I have to leave the, the jungle? Mm. I don't really, I mean, I don't even know this village. So you're trying to take me out of what's my natural, my natural element at this point. So on this journey now, Bagheera is trying to keep him focused on the reason why he's going back and Shere Khan is now aware like oh he's he's leaving so I'm on a hunt the drought is over on his journey through the jungle he splits from Bagheera there's a situation Shere Khan sees him in the you know in the grass and Bagheera has to tell him to run off so he runs off he runs into a snake the snake is like, what are you doing here? You're a man, don't you know what you are? I know what you are. Stay close to me, it's dangerous out here, trust in me. So all while he's gazing into this snake's eyes and listening to this voice, the snake is coiling its body yeah. around Mowgli and he's tightening and squeezing like a snake does. And so he's killing him all while he's listening to this song, this like trust in me type of so the snake, Lullaby. It, the he snake rocking is them to sleep. singing oh. to mm -hmm. him. And it's just like, oh, okay, cool. I'm sticking around and I'm dying too <laughs> while I'm <laughs> listening to you sing Trust in Me. There's a bear that comes along that, you know, pounces on the snake and he saves Mowgli. And this is the live action video, so mm. bear with me because it might be slightly different from the real old one that looks like a drawing. So Bagheera, not Bagheera, sorry, Baloo, the bear, takes him to his cave. And he's like, uh, you know, Mowgli has passed out at this point. He saved him from the snake and Mowgli is, is unconscious. He wakes him up in the cave. And he's like, where am I? He's like, don't you remember what happened? I, I saved you from the, the, <laughs> the claws of death. I, <laughs> I, you were dying and I saved you. So can, can you climb? Let's, do you got that ability? Because now I need my payback for saving your life. Mm. So he sends him on a little journey to get him food. And now he's like using him to prepare for, ha you know, hibernating. Most of y'all know that bears in the jungle don't hibernate. So he's helping him get all this food and honey and stuff together. But Garrett comes along. He's like, don't you know, like they don't, bears don't even hibernate in the jungle that, right. so while he's you know like kicking it with Baloo Baloo is very carefree and just free spirit and Bagheera is like oh god forbid <laughs> he is your this is who you done connected with and you feel like oh I'm good I'm really staying in the jungle now because I'm with Baloo so while he's kicking it on this 
journey, he, they just like swaying and singing, bare necessities going down this river. There's some monkeys that come and kidnap him. The monkeys take him to King Louis. King Louis is like, I'm, you know, I'm the king of the jungle, really. Uh, whether you recognize me as king or not, because that's, that's my role here. And you're a man, and one thing that I desire from your kind is this, this fire. Fire is power. And they, they call it the red flower. So he's like, I need you to make me the red flower and teach me how to make it. Mowgli, I don't know how. I'm a man, but I ain't never been raised by men. I was raised by wolves. So they have to rescue him. Baloo and now Bagheera are like, oh, shoot, King Louie got him. So we got to go rescue him from King Louie. And I'll fast forward. They rescue him from, from the monkey. And along the way, he finds out that his dad from the wolf pack was killed because Shere Khan is on this hunt. He's like, well, I, if I can't get to you, I'll make you come to me. Because if I hurt your family, mm. then I know you'll come back. So he's like, you know, now he's, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. I got to face this, this, this tiger. So he's like, okay, well, if the red flower hurt him before, I just, you know, that's what I'll get and I'll, I'll hurt him again. I'll fight him and I'll, that's what I'll do. So he, he gets a torch. He ends up going to that man village that's nearby. He steals the, a torch from there and he's running through the jungle. All while this is still ignorance. He's a child. Right. Cause you're running through the jungle with a torch. Fire, yeah. So you're setting things on fire. So now you're surrounded. Yeah, you're coming to this tiger and he coming to you. Y'all fighting each other. But all the while you're causing fire all around you. So they, you know, they have this battle fight, if you will, in the jungle. Branch breaks, Shere Khan falls in the fire. You know, now he's the avenged Akilah's death and he's defeated this fearsome tiger that everybody is like, you know, scared of. And that's, that's, that's Jungle Book. He's the winner. He's a winner. <laughs> but. You had mentioned something. We were talking about this, what what it really meant to you, you know, kind of the selection process and what what was displayed in Jungle Book, kind of kind of giving something to what we deal with as well. Mm-hmm. It's survival techniques. Where are you learning your survival techniques from? Because Bagheera trusted, entrusted him to this wolf pack. It's like, this is your best chance of survival. So call it survival of the fittest. Got it. If I learn how to survive the way the wolf survives, it's my best shot at life. If I learn how to survive like they survive, the older I get, you know, I can create offspring that also have these strong traits that I learned, right? Strong children, supposed to breed strong children. So there's an issue going on in the, in the younger generations now where it's just like, where, where did some of these seemingly strong traits go? Where is all this anxiety and depression coming from? Or did it always exist? And it was a, it wasn't a dominant trait at the time, but it was always there. And just like in science, you got a, a you know a Punnett square. Eventually, that that you know recessive they call it trait mm -hmm. is expressed. So if you get recessive and recessive, you create recessive, right? So that trait becomes it becomes more becomes more prominent. So it's like, what do you do about that? But reintroduce dominant traits. Mm. You got to weed that back out as a population out of your environment, right? So that's, that's, that's the, the, the team part. That, that's where my, my passion comes from, where I wanna be able to help the teens and young adults, I don't wanna forget that. I don't wanna just say teen night mm -hmm. or teen ministry, it's teens and young adults. So even like those early college students, some of those things that you struggle with like this 
like I said, it's just like the anxiety and the, and the depression and self-esteem issues and all of these things that come up. How do you really handle that and not defeat yourself along the way and, and you never get over it? It's just like if you recognize that it's there, then you have to face it in order to actually get over it. And you need to have people around you that can give you some proper tools in order to do so. Because mm -hmm. if I'm just fueling the problem, like, oh, shoot, my... My, my sister is, she says she's depressed. Well, I know she likes shoes. I just buy her some shoes and that'll make her happy so she won't be depressed no more. But is that how you solve depression? Right? Yes. So that's, that's, not, that's not giving you a tool to get over it. That's just pacifying. That's just putting a Band-Aid over the real issue. So that's, that's kind of where you know where that, I am. That, that piece on you know dominance and weakness and remember in back in the movie um it was they were talking about Mowgli having to learn how to adapt mm -hmm. and and move according to the wolf pack mm -hmm. <laughs> and that him not coming up to full strength is not a good thing because he will be considered weak and the wolf pack is only as strong as the weakest as the weakest pack. link, uh -huh. right? So think of it like your family. If you got a family member, I'm not talking about us. <laughs> if you have a family member that you know is a weak link, then as a whole, what are y'all doing? What are we doing mm -hmm. to make our weak link just as strong as everybody else? Because that's that's where longevity comes from. Right? Yeah. Because your weak link is not going to do anything but stay weak unless something comes along that helps them yeah. get some strength there. It's like if I'm weak and I know I'm weak, I, I got to work out. I got to do something. You ain't never seen a skinny lion, right? Not too many, no. It's <laughs> not even in their gene type. That family, that, that species, they're not weak because that's how they survive on their muscle, on their brawn, on being able to attack, you know, the animals that they eat to survive, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I know that you can't eat what I eat because you're too weak, then how do I help you survive? You know, um, I know biology is kind of your thing, yeah. right? And, um, and traits, you know, has always been one of your areas that you kind of lean on or lean toward. Um, so, we're seeing a whole different, I'm not, it's not just the generation, but it's just a whole different set of traits that are more apparent that sometimes it kind of blows me away because I'm thinking, what the heck's going on here? You know, why are kids acting like this? And, you know, and um, then I thought back to that snake talking to Mowgli and just you know, just bringing him in, you know, he was all just caught up in this whole, you know, the song and the, the movement and the rhythm and all of this stuff, which we got music, right? Mm -hmm. so that's an area, we got social media, that's mm -hmm. an area, and then it's the, the, who am I, right? And the snake is telling him, I know who you are. I don't think that's anywhere else in the movie. Out of all the animals who's gonna speak to him, like that, it's the snake, which to me was the devil, mm -hmm. who just brings you in, and pulls you in, and you know. And they said that it, the devil comes as an angel of light, you know. So that is appealing, right? So kind of, can you talk about the traits, you know? And I know traits get passed down, you know, DNA, right? Passed down from generation to generation. Uh, but there's other pieces to that as well. Yeah, so <laughs> shiny, it's like, you know, like fish, they get attracted to shiny stuff. Yeah. But there's like, um, oh, I would have to ask Carlos what it's called. There's a fish, you know, like on Finding Dory, yeah. those, um, I speak in Pixar, yeah. Disney. <laughs> so the fish that has the light. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. In the darkness, it attracts fish, but you, that bad boy open up his jaws and it's over, right? So it's like you have to be able to discern 
<laughs> what that light source is. Where is it coming from? Mm. Because you might be following a light at the end of the tunnel, but is it a train or is it daylight? <laughs> it's, it's, you got to know the difference. Right. You got to use your clues and your senses, right, to know like what is what's the source. And if it's something, you said DNA, so of course I got to go there a little bit. You have something called a, a, I won't go too deep, but like a, your phenotype. Mm -hmm. Your phenotype is your outward exp expression of what's in your genes, your, in, in your DNA, right? So if I don't even have a certain variation, I'll, I'll never be tall. If it's not even in there, I, there's no way I can, I can be tall. If it's not meant for me to have blue eyes, I'll never have blue eyes. It's not, it's not in my DNA, right? So even characteristics, yeah. though, are, it's in there. And depending on, you know, who you hook up with, there can be more to that. Mm -hmm. So it's like him plus her made that, but there's certain things in him and there's certain things in her. So what ends up getting expressed is a combination of the two. And there's so many variations that an individual person comes with, but it still goes back to the piece of, like as a parent, mm -hmm. you know what's in you. Mama knows what's in her. So when you see those signs and symptoms like a doctor does, like, oh, no, 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 no. I gotta pull her back from that. So going back to like the teens and young adults, it's, just, it's, the, it's the, the mentor piece. Mm -hmm. And being able, or having somebody in general, it's not even just a mentor, because sometimes it's a teacher. Mm -hmm. That's like, you know what, I, I recognize that. Because somebody else in my family got that same, that whatever that, that thing is. So, you know, there might be a side conversation that I have with you, like, you know what, I know you had a hard time last night. We got a test coming up and I'm gonna do everything I can to help you study for this because I want you to succeed because I know you ain't getting it at home. But it's those people. That's what's important. That's what's important to help these teens and young adults really thrive and the way that all of us are, are like, what is it? What is the, what's this, what is this that everybody is going through right now mm -hmm. that I don't feel like I went through? But actually you did, you just might've handled it a little differently. Cause it's like everybody had a self-esteem issue somewhere along the lines. Everybody was scared of something. Right. You know, that's like, you, you wasn't built without the ability to have anxiety or depression. It's there, but if you know that it's not of God, there's certain things that I've learned along the way that's just like, oh, okay, well, I don't need to be worried and scared and all of that. But if ain't nobody taught me that, how do I know? So what, I, what I've picked up on over the years now is that there's been, there's relationships that are natural and then some are forced and others, you know, come different ways. But teachers, parents, neighborhoods, neighbors had relationships that are not there anymore. Like you remember your teachers, a lot of them. I remember specific teachers who did certain things for me, with me, you know, all of that. Discipline, but also encouragement. Both, got both, right? Which picked me up. People in the neighborhood, I knew individuals on our street, they saw me, if I was doing something wrong, they tell or they get me. I mean, that was a part of the process. That seemed to be, that seems not to exist as much anymore. And there are certain teachers that still do it. The parent piece and the neighbor piece, that, don't, that doesn't appear to be there anymore. And it has this thing now where, you know, kids don't really play outside. And I know we kind of transitioned, but we're talking about kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but kids don't really play outside as much. Uh, and if they do, they go to events and activities and, but they don't just like play, you know, hopscotch and two square and they just don't do that. You know, you don't see kids riding bikes and, you know, at least not in our neighborhood, right? Um, so what is my connection for the support 
where is the support coming from other than maybe a church or in any, you know, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. It's got to be something that brings me, connecting me to other people outside of cell phone, <laughs> Twitter, you know, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. Where, where is my, my formed connections that go long term? Where you have a friend at 10 years old and you, that person is still connected to you at 45 years old, you know? It's, it's involvement. It's like getting your kids involved because it's, you, you letting screens raise your kids. And it's like, well, what else do they do? Well, they don't, they don't really go outside, so they never met the neighbor's kids that do come outside on occasion. We really never yelled across the street to them before and said, do y'all want to ride bikes? Right. Because we won't even come outside to see them. So, like, for us, it was our, you know, we was right across the street. And what was crazy is we we weren't even allowed to cross the street half the time. So we had to we made friends yelling. And, and but it's I'm still we still friends today. That's right. And the majority of the time we weren't even allowed to go across the street. But you it was you that started taking all of us to, you know, the the youth groups and, and we were the choir and, and, and all of that. So where it's just like we really were able to like hone in on like, you know what? We have this in common and this in common and she leans on me for this. I can lean on her for that. And that's the piece that's missing with a lot of kids is that's where that loneliness is just like, how could you possibly be lonely? You go to school, right? Then you make some friends or but it's just like healthy relationships in schools is a, is a missing piece too because they're not getting I don't want to say they're just not getting it but at home because a lot of stuff starts at home I don't have a healthy safe home life so I go to school and I act out and I'm a bad kid here I can't make no friends because I'm really a bully but it's really because my, my I, you know saw something crazy at home on my way to school this morning and I always got this baggage that I'm coming here with. So we can't really, I don't even know how to be myself here because I'm really just kind of like dealing with, dealing with all this stuff. It's, it's like healthy homes is the problem. Mm -hmm. It's like a decrease in, in, in healthy in home life. Mm -hmm. Because all of my friends, if they had a similar upbringing as me, that's that's where it started at. Like I, you trusted that I could go spend the night at, at my basketball coach's house with his daughter because we were we were like this. Right, right. That wasn't a problem. Right. But you knew the kind of man he was. Right. And it's just like, well, where is, I might not even be able to call your parents. Sometimes you don't even know the parents anymore. The that's kids will be the ones that make the plans and execute them. Yeah. It's like how that happen. Right, exactly. But it's just like, I, I don't, they don't know how to do those healthy, the healthy relationships anymore. Cause it's just like, there's so much other influence and so many things that they see on the internet that they don't know how to separate as real and fake. And it's just like, don't you know that I get on this camera and I have to pretend to be this way? <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I am. As soon as you cut this off, it, I'm back to my real life. But what you saw just influenced you to try to be like my, the camera me. Right. But it's like, you gotta be able to separate the two. And if I, but if you're watching it every single day and nobody ever told you that that's fake, you start to bring it into your own, your own life as it's like, it's real. Mm. If I do my makeup every day before I get on camera, you start to think that that's what my face look like. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. So now I think that I'm not pretty because, dang, my, my skin ain't clear. I don't, you know, it's just it's little stuff Filters like that. And all yeah. That. It's like, I, but that's how kids start to think, especially from, because it's more young girls around me than young guys. I see it yeah. in the young girls. Mm -hmm. They think that they, like, how are you 11 years old and you calling yourself fat? Who, who told you that? Who told you that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you have these self-esteem issues and, and it's like a real thing. Like you really crying about it. Right. And it's like, dang, like I was, if somebody called me fat when I was little, I'd just talk about them back. <laughs>
But it's just like when influence is so strong, right, exactly. you really, it's like, this is what I believe because at home or wherever else, I'm not hearing it enough that I'm beautiful. Then if I'm hearing the negative more than I hear the positive, well, which outweigh the other? Yeah, this, this is, this is a, it's, it's a tough area because it's real, it's so real, you know, obviously we talked about traits, traits are passed down, we talked about this little story, you know, and, and understanding there's so much going on, not only in the home, but all around the home, neighborhoods, in the school, on TV, I mean, it's a lot of, lot coming in, and if you don't have a filter of some sort, and you talked about discerning and understanding, is that a train or is that daylight? You know, just to know the difference and to have a, a communication channel, you know, someone that's a trustworthy place to talk, and maybe that's what's gonna happen in teen night as well, but there's, or youth, young adult, <laughs> whatever, um, where people can trust and get to that point where they can share the things that are going on, the things that they're dealing with, and how they can really uh, appropriately handle and make decisions or back away from stuff. And I think that's, it's just so important um, that what we have shared tonight, I know it's, touched several topics, several areas, um, but in general, we're talking about how we can do things in a better way. You know, we're talking about parenting, we're talking about the home life, we're, and we're talking about how we can help and support. So I pray that what you have heard tonight has made a difference, and actually there's something that you can take away as you share with your children, and as you share in, in circles that you're in, that will be helpful, uh, and that that's something you can take away literally take away. So I'm thankful. I'm glad that you were able to come out tonight and share with us and uh, have this conversation, another session of Talks and Chats here at Zion Global Ministries. So thanks again for tuning in and Shalom. The sun is